sure he wasn't swerving to avoid something? An animal? Anything. I told you. He's driving like a maniac. I think we can tell that much by how he's ended up. I don't know what else to say. As if he doesn't know the road, he drives up and down it often enough. You know him? I know who he is, obviously. I recognise the car. He's some bigwig from British nuclear power, wasn't he? Pretty suitable death, then. He's practically deep fried the whole place. Stephen Blake for Mrs. Wilson. Who? It's Steve Blake. Uh, she doesn't know me. It's just that I was there when her husband had his accident. I thought I should come. I understand if she doesn't want to see me. Please come through. I'm sorry, I'm probably the last person you want to see right now. Are you a friend of my husband? Uh, no, no, I just... I was there when it happened. He's... Darling, who is it? Oh, can I help you? I was so sure it was you. I saw you. What you saw was my car. It's my belief that your imagination did the rest. Filled in the blanks, so to speak. So, have they found out who it really was? Not much hope of identifying him from the remains, apparently. Be some local yob, joyrider. And the, the car was taken from the pub car park. Must have been a pretty sophisticated joyrider. I mean, the security on Jags is daisy. Well, perhaps the man was an experienced and determined car thief, stealing to order. It does happen. So why was he driving like a maniac? Well, who knows? A car with that power in the hands of some spotty youth is a dangerous beast. No. No, I saw the man. He was older. Mr. Blake, you came to my house because you thought I was dead. I hardly think you're a great judge of what does or doesn't make sense. Now, as diverting as this has been, I have a very demanding schedule. Of course. I'm sorry, sir. You can't do that here. Sorry, I didn't realize. How's it going? Steve Blake, I was, I was here last night. I witnessed the accident. Of course. Of course you did. You've already made your statement, haven't you? It's a funny business, isn't it? But not being James Wilson in the car after all. So what's your theory? In my job, it never does to jump to conclusions too soon. Mr. Wilson told me the remains were too burnt to be identified, so how do you go about finding who it was? Dental records. You were nearer to the explosion than me. You felt the heat. There was nothing left. I know these cars have big petrol tanks, but I was wondering if something else might have caused the explosion. That has occurred to us, Mr. Blake. We've got a couple of explosive experts coming over. I suspect I have slightly more experience of these things than you do. So you think something odd might have been going on? I don't think anything until I've got the evidence. The moment of truth.
Was he dead? Or was he faking it? Or was he lying to prove a bigger truth? I want you to think about the relationship between the truth and an image of it. Do you see what you want to see? Or what the photographer wants you to see? Where's the truth? so damaged that, practically speaking, there was nothing to do a post-mortem on. <coughs> Unusually, even the victim's teeth were destroyed by the severity of the blaze. I would, however, like to comment on the degree of burn suffered by the victim. They were so exceptional that I asked the forensic scientist on the case to account for the heat at what was basically a car accident. Um, with your permission, I'll read his comments. To generate the degree of destruction that I saw at the accident site, you would normally need the sort of heat generated by a bomb or volcanic rock. I can only conclude that the victim's car had in some way been exposed to as yet unidentified chemicals or explosives. Thank you. Superintendent Ferguson, anything more to add? Just that we are conducting rigorous inquiries into the possibility that Mr. Wilson's car was exposed to some sort of radiation at the power plant where he is based. So far, I'm afraid our investigations have proved fruitless. And in your considerable experience, is such evidence likely to be forthcoming? Uh, frankly, no. The incident was unusual, but accidents are by their nature unusual. <coughs> Although we can only speculate, it is my personal belief that this was the work of another so-called joyrider. Thank you, Superintendent. Oh. Open verdict. What's that supposed to mean? What it says, no conclusions can be drawn. I saw that car go over the edge of the hill. The driver was a middle-aged man in a suit. He didn't look much like a joyrider to me. Yes, you thought you saw James Wilson go over the edge. That doesn't make you a terribly reliable witness. I'm afraid all the real evidence was destroyed in the blast. Yeah, it's remarkable, isn't it? Sorry, uh, Superintendent, can I have a quick word? What is it you wanted to know? I just wondered if you'd considered the possibility of a political attack on James Wilson. A terrorist cell, perhaps? Well, why not? Head of British nuclear power, he's got to have one or two enemies. Anti-nuclear lobby, anything. Why does a terrorist who successfully breaks into Mr Wilson's car then settle for driving it off? He was driving towards James Wilson's house when he died. Maybe the car was packed with explosives. Well, we are pursuing this line of inquiry, Mr Blake. An open verdict doesn't mean our work stops. So where's your new evidence? I'm sorry. You said in the inquest you thought it was a joyrider. But yesterday you said you didn't have all the evidence. When we talked yesterday at the accident site. Mr. Wilson dying at the wheel of his car. Conversations with me that you and I never had. I think your memory is playing tricks on you, Mr. Blake. Again. What's your problem, Mr. Blake? Is your life really so dull? My problem is that some poor bastard was killed in your car. Nobody cared much as long as it wasn't you. 
just how far do you think our sympathy should stretch? This idiot stole a car. He was probably on drinking drugs. He drove the thing at high speed along a badly lit road. Left no skid marks. What? He lost control of the car, but he didn't brake. Have a look at the road. It's not a mark. Uh, I'm sure the police would have some explanation. Would you stop that, please? No, I'm sure they would. They seem to have an explanation for everything. That's why I'm not going to the police with this. I'm going to the press. out of date. Press passes are like people. They gain authority with age. You've lost weight. So have you. No, I haven't. I know, I just thought I'd flatter you. I need your help. You always did. Can we talk? What's this story that's woken you up? Sheep rustling? More poaching than rustling. Poaching what? Somebody's life. Somebody else's death. You're not still banging on about your photographer's angst, are you? No, nothing like that. Good. I thought for a minute you'd come all this way to open up an argument way past its sell-by date. Joanna, if I thought anybody else could have helped, I'd have gone to them like a shot. Thanks, Steve. I'm touched. <laughs> OK, what do you want? Wilson Harold, Wilson Jockey. Wilson James. There you are. James Wilson. Appointed Chief Executive of British Nuclear Power four years ago. Surprise choice as head of the Energy Council earlier this year. Why a surprise? He's considered quite a liberal. Not from the little I've seen. He's a bit unlucky with his cars, your James Wilson. What? Three months ago, hit a tree with his sports car near Lincoln. Managed to escape with minor injuries. Really? <laughs> Steve. Man unhurt in collision with a tree might be a sassy headline where you okay. come from, but... Really... Who handled the inquiry? I got a tenor. Says it was Superintendent John Ferguson. Wrong. Inspector John Ferguson. He's been promoted since then. And transferred. What can you get on him? Let's see. I thought you were all powerful. Shut up. Give me five minutes, I'll get round this. That's better. Superintendent John Ferguson grows his own vegetables. Sharp career eyes the last five years. Bright, tough on law and order. Transferred to Central Ops two years ago. What's that? Comes under the Home Office, sort of MI5 meets Special Branch with a smattering of the anti-terrorist squad. Last March, an RAF commander was feared dead after a plane crash. It turns out it wasn't him flying the plane. This happened before. I'll print it out if you like. Food. 
Ferguson said police could not identify the pilot because of the severity of the explosion. Yeah, another victimless death. Hey, that's my kind of journalism. Snappy headline, but factually inaccurate. There are victims. What's the point of this bloody machine? Sorry, your guest doesn't have security clearance. Security clearance? What are you talking about? We've been instructed to escort Mr. Blake to the nearest exit. This has never been a problem before. I forget it, they're just doing somebody else's job. Security's a lot tighter these days. Sandra? No. You obviously still give off odour to newsprint, even if you have turned your back on us. It's not who I was that worried them, it's what we were looking at. Steve, some crisped corpses and an incompetent cop do not a conspiracy make. Or how about adding crashed computer to the scenario? I found a way around that. How? Come on, I'll show you. Let me buy you lunch. You're not telling me you don't miss the lifestyle down here. Oh, I miss the glamour, obviously. I never thought you'd actually stay away. From me, maybe, not the job. That's the trouble. It became the same thing in the end, didn't it? One thing our marriage didn't descend into was self-pity. Try and steer clear of it now, will you? Table 13 free. Yeah, there you go. Two cappuccinos, please. Techno virgin. Two cappuccinos. What is all this? A cyber cafe. Info technology meets the frothy coffee brigade. World Wide Web, the internet. You had heard they'd invented the wheel. How's this work? <laughs> Can you get anything else on Ferguson? Was he in charge of all the inquests? Let's find out. Here we go. There was only one other copper involved. Also central ops, Philip Gates. Hello. This gets tastier. Gates and Ferguson seem to go way back. So what? So do a lot of copies of that rank. No, 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 no. They're from the same village, or should I say, ex village. Sweet Hope? Norfolk Coast, four or five years ago. The whole place fell off the edge of a cliff. Something like that. Not bad, eh? Gates and Ferguson were the two policemen on duty the night of the Sweet Hope disaster. They both got commendations. So their village disappearing into the sea didn't do their job prospects any harm. Policemen are like journalists. They need a good disaster to launch their careers. Look at this lot. This is fantastic. You're actually animated. I never thought I'd see that again. I'll get this printed out. It's table 13. Thank you. Table 13, free. Thanks very much. You use that place a lot. Well, let's just say it's helped me cut a few corners in the past. It's instant access to the web, and you're virtually untraceable. All I did was hitch a ride and launch the Ferguson file onto the net. <laughs> Drugs raid, probably. You don't think? Don't starve. I'm going to go and see this village. It's what this thing's all about. What's the hurry? You're not even in the business anymore. Let me see if there's anything in all this before you go chasing phantoms. Call me in sweet hope. Oh, and by the way, thank you. You might at least have paid for the cappuccinos. This is one of the better parts of the job. So you must get sick of nosy types like me asking about Sweet Hope all the time. There's not much interest in it these days. But it's human nature to be curious about disasters. So this wasn't a disaster, was it? Everyone survived. From where I'm standing, that looks like a miracle. Could you shut the door, please? Take a seat.
before, after. Everyone knew the village's days were numbered because of the gradual subsidence and the terrible storm. What they hadn't accounted for was the explosives cache. That the Ministry of Defence had no knowledge of? No. Or if they did, they weren't going to admit it. Reckoned it dated back to the Second World War. Might even still be some down there. Why hasn't anybody checked? Apparently, they've lost any records which might help. This photo was taken the morning after. I think they were just glad to be alive. How come they all left the village in time? Everyone I've spoken to said that somehow they knew. If you believe that sort of thing. Do you? I would be better off asking someone who was there. I was travelling back to Sweet Hope that evening. The storm slowed me down, but I was close enough to feel the explosion. Did you see anything? There was a white flash and a fireball. I got out of the car and everything was still. There was a strange smell. Something like herbs or lavender burning, but not quite either. Let's just put it down to experience. Superintendent Ferguson, when he was just a constable. The other one is Philip Gates. They decided to take the credit for leading the villagers to safety. The press loved it. So, any chance of me talking to any of the uh, survivors? I'm not round here, I'm afraid. They had nothing to stay for. If you excuse me, I have to go back to work. Hello. Joanna, it's Steve. I'm in Norfolk. I've rented a cottage. I've got an appointment with Gates, the other Sweet Hope copper, tomorrow. Can't you get a hobby? Take up jigsaws. There are some names I'd like you to check before I go. How many names? Only about 200. I'm not your assistant, Steve. Don't push me. Listen, listen, they were all saved from Sweet Hope on the night of the disaster. I just want to know if any of them have done anything significant since. How do you mean? If their careers have taken off like Gates and Ferguson's. I think some of them might have been bought off after the accident. OK. Give me the top 20 names and it stops there. Playing games, eh? If you're gonna arrest me, then just get on with it. If you're not, then just piss off. I'm not from the MOD, I just wanted to chat. Try the Samaritan. I did, they recommended you. Can I buy you a drink? Where? There must be somewhere. I'm not thirsty. 
I'll die by a lobster then. Tenner. Fiver. Done. Give us a hand with these then. Aren't you worried about botting in this area? All my family fished here down the years. Why should I do any different? Several tons of undetonated explosives. Can you believe that? Why else would the MOD coordinate off? Had some barbed wire left over from the last war, did they? Yeah. Fiver, you said. Thank you. Police are giving up trying to turn me off those waters. They might warn me once a month now. Used to be once a day. When they were warning you, you ever come across a copper called Philip Gates, top brass? Yeah. It was him that decided I wasn't worth the bother. Said he remembered me from his days as a bobby on the beat in Sweet Hope. You from Sweet Hope? Wish I was. Nah. I just used to shoplift there on a Saturday afternoon. You're still at it, by the looks of things. Be amazed what gets washed up on that beach. Still find something there at least once a month. When'd you find this? Morning after it happened. Got most of it that day. What is that smell? It's not seawater. It's... Put it down. That's my stuff. Put it down! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm... I'm not trying to upset you, just... <sighs> you talk to anyone else from Sweet Hope? Only a copper called uh, Ferguson. He's another one. Everybody in Sweet Hope that night. Their luck changed. I mean, serious. Midas stuff. Is that what this little museum's all about? You hoping to catch some luck off it? Well, it had to be something in the village, didn't it? I tell you, there's powerful magic still down there. Here's a donation. Checking those names you gave me. You might be right. There is something very strange happening to the Sweet Hope survivors. I really think you're onto something. Uh, Mr. Blake? Please see you. Close on 250,000 people went missing in this country last year, and you've come up with what? A dozen instances of so-called victim's death? But all these accidents follow identical patterns. Someone is missing, presumed dead, and then turns up safe and well. And look at the profiles of these people. Uh, energy commissioners, senior civil servants, top brass military. The reason you hear about such cases is they do involve high-profile victims. And you or Superintendent Ferguson have led every inquiry. There's nothing sinister about that either. That's the reason the Central Ops Unit was conceived, streamlining high-profile inquiries. And providing job opportunities for Bobbies from Sweet Home? I was wondering when you get round to that. You chaps usually do. But you're not the only two Sweet Hope refugees whose careers have rocketed since then. None of this is news to me, Mr Blake. 
Out of the 122 adults of working age saved that night, 15 have risen to the boards of their companies, 12 have become leading traders on the stock exchange, 28 run successful businesses from, the, uh, from arms trade, drugs research, 10 are now senior officials in government departments and 3 are MPs. It's, it's a record Eaton would be proud of. We lost everything we had that night, everything we'd ever worked for. Now you can either go under at the thought of that, or it can drive you on with a force that's simply awesome. So refugees make the best capitalists. That's one way of putting it. Hello. This isn't about unreturned library books, is it? You're not part of some library service flying squad. You seemed as interested in my husband as I am. My name's Melissa Gates. When I realised Philip had survived the Sweet Hope disaster, I was so relieved. So happy that at first I didn't notice the change in him. Well, he could have been in shock, couldn't he? We both could. That's how I explained it to begin with. But then the days went by and then the weeks. And I realised that he'd changed for good. I talked to your husband about this. He said he thought the survivors became highly motivated because they'd lost everything. Well, I lost everything. But I didn't change the way those people did that night. It wasn't just your husband you noticed was different. People I'd known for years were suddenly strangers to me. Their emotions, their dreams, their personalities. Before I came to Sweet Home, I saw a man die in a car crash. Or rather, I thought I did, until I saw the same man alive and well the next day. It's almost as if something similar has happened here. The Ministry of Defence owns all this land down to the coast. I thought that must be part of the explanation, some chemical warfare experiment gone wrong, maybe even a deliberately engineered accident. You don't believe that now? I don't know. All I know is that if any army anywhere had a weapon like that, then would they really be able to keep it a secret? Only thing could be covered up, as long as you make sure the right people gain by it. So how many chemicals do you know that kill people and then bring them back to life? Thanks. What for? For making me feel as if I'm not alone in all this. I think I might know someone who might be able to help us. Would you be willing to talk to them? Oh, yes. Yes, I think so. Oh, and, uh, and the slides. Can you get me some copies? Trust me, I'm a librarian. cruises. You're not afraid of the explosives? You told me they were a fairy story. I wasn't staking my life on it then, was I? I just want to see what the fuss is all about. Thanks a lot. The bloke wanted to see the place, and all I did was take some of his cash to sail him out there. We've tolerated you long enough. 
we catch you fishing these waters again, we'll have no choice but to take legal action. Look, what are you saying? That I'm banned from this bit of sea or that bit of sea? It's always moving, man. So which bit do you own? I told you, so. You certainly seem to have got your teeth into sweet hope, Mr. Blake. It's a remarkable story. I thought after our chat yesterday you'd understand that it's neither remarkable nor a story. Well, I might have thought that until I visited the library in Mayston. So you've met Melissa? That's right. Well, she's a very vulnerable woman, Mr. Blake. And if you take advantage of her in any way, I'll have your ass in advice sooner you can say, what's the verdict? It doesn't strike me as a type who needs protecting. I would have thought you were the one person to know that first impressions can sometimes be very deceptive. The Sweet Hope disaster took a greater toll on Melissa than all of us. So she said. Did she also tell you about the breakdown she had or the psychiatric help that she needed? Why are you telling me this? Because I don't want her exposed to any more harm and pain than she's already suffered. We might be divorced, but I won't see her hurt. I take it we understand each other. I spoke to Gates again today. Um, Steve. Very local. Hi, Joanna. Um, this is Melissa. I mentioned on the phone. Please meet So, I take it I haven't come all this way just for the seafood. <laughs> Melissa, believe me, people wake up every morning and find they no longer know the person they married. It happens. It doesn't mean a thing. This isn't about falling out of love. This is about a total change of personality. All I recognize is the outer shell, everything else. I'm sorry about what's happened to you. It must hurt like hell, but it's not news. OK, right, let's look at the facts. James Wilson, dead, but not dead. Half a dozen others, dead, but not dead. Sweet Hope is the same. All the inhabitants are feared dead, and then they turn up safe and well. Did 200 char-grilled corpses turn up in a car park round the corner? No. Well, it's not the same. No, let's say the MOD has done some tests with chemicals at sea. Right? Experiment goes wrong, so they buy off the inhabitants of Sweet Hope with enhanced prospects. Then they use these chemicals on selected members of the establishment. Why? I don't know yet. If this is a conspiracy, what's it for? Who gains by it? Who suffers? But in a year's time, the Sweet Hope survivors could form the most powerful network in the country, and then it'd be too late to ask who suffers. So, the British Secret Service have mm -hmm. chemically altered the population of a small village. I'll buy that. Not necessarily the British Secret Services. Are you serious? Who? The Yanks don't need Sweet Hope, they've got McDonald's. The Russians can't even control their own backyard. So what if you rule out the human race? Where does that take you? I'm sorry, what are you suggesting? Zombies? Aliens? Why not? Look, I've spent the past five years trying to square this circle. The only reason I drove out here tonight is because I knew this man when he had an eye for the truth. <laughs> Where did you two find each other? Some kind of self-help group? Excuse me. Melissa. She may not have an explanation for what she's been through, but you don't have any answers either. Divorce does funny things to people, Steve. That's the only answer yeah, I You've forgotten how to listen. And you've been away too long. I think you might have told me about your line of thinking before we went in there. Then you'd have stood up for me in front of your friend, would you? I wouldn't have arranged the meeting at all. There isn't a rational explanation. You said so yourself. Yeah, well, I meant to carry on looking for one back on Earth, you know? Do you think I want to believe this? You said yourself you saw a man killed and then alive the next day. Do you think that sounds rational? Well, things happen. You have to keep looking. Absolutely. And it always comes back to the same conclusion. When I spoke to your husband, your ex 
husband today. He said that after the disaster, you had some sort of breakdown. I was living in a nightmare. The person I loved was no longer there for me. He hadn't died, he hadn't left me, he wasn't having an affair. But he wasn't the man I loved anymore. I was totally alone and nobody could understand. If you want to call that a breakdown, then go ahead. You won't be the first. Look, if Joanna had gone with this and your history had come out, they'd have crucified you. Yeah, but you really don't see, do you? They'll crucify us anyway. Where did you get this? Piss off! Let me sleep! Listen to me! You sure you found this on the beach? Of course I did. Everything got washed up. When? I've told you, the first morning after the village went under. So how could a child who survived be wearing it in a photograph taken the same morning? Maybe there's more than one. Oh, come on, it's only a Marks and Spencer's job, is it? Get dressed. You're taking me out there. You're a bleeding nutter! You know that! That's quite a tribute coming from you. This time, if they catch us out here, they'll probably just pick us off with a cruise missile. You know the trouble with young people these days? No sense of adventure.
Recruiting the vulnerable to your cause. Your friend, Mr. Hallworth, has just lost his home and his livelihood because of you. I've seen the bodies, Gates. Who's are they? What do you think you're doing this for? I saw Wilson die in his car. And then he turns up safe and well, and it's happened before. And all the investigations are managed by you and Ferguson. And then my accident happens, and here you are again. I'm here because some irrelevant half-wit with a death wish went swimming around a site full of live explosives. It's so irrelevant, you just tried to get me killed. No one tried anything of the sort. Your delusions flatter you. Is that what you told Melissa? That she was imagining things, hmm? That she was spooked? Yeah, I'm on to you. You're on to me. But you don't know what I've done. You can see through me. But you don't know who I am. Tell me. Exactly what is it I should be scared of? The truth. Get him out of here. my train fare. I was thinking I'm going further than that will take me. Well, how far did you have in mind? 
I don't know who that man is calling himself Gates, but he isn't your husband. I've got proof of that now. How many would you say? Difficult to know. Enough to be the entire Swedo population. Well, no, this isn't them. These are the sweetheart villages, Melissa. They all died on the night of the original explosion. Including your husband. No. They can't be dead. They've been changed, some drug, something. You said you no longer knew people you'd known for years. You were right! It wasn't them anymore. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was something in me. Maybe the doctors were right. Sweet Hope happened five years ago. It could be happening again. Wilson's resurrection proves that. I saw the man die. I wanted my life back, not this. I want my life back. Find out who the people are pretending to be the villagers and you'll get your life back. I found this in the church. There's an engraving on the inside. Does E.M. mean anything to you? Tell me this. Why would an ex-manager of a garage now be undersecretary at trade and industry? Oh, maybe you did an oil change for Margaret Beckett and it just went on from there. The Sweet Hope survivors have got someone in every major government department on the boards of oil companies and the stock exchange, drugs research. Three of them are MPs. If this isn't a conspiracy I'm looking at, what is it? Insomnia? I'm right, Joanna. You know I'm right. They're taking over the country. I've got photographic evidence to prove that they're not who they say they are. <laughs> oh, yeah? Taken by you or your sidekick, Mystic Meg? <sighs> You're doing that thing you used to do. What thing? Counting to ten under your breath when I start to annoy you. No. <laughs> okay. Mm. Bring me the photographs. I'll see what I can do. No, you don't get off that easily. Some of that info you gave me is already out of date. Can you have another dig around? See what they've been up to recently? Anything else? The moon on a stick, perhaps? No, thanks. I seem to remember you promised me that once before and it never arrived. DHL, delivery for Mr. Blake? Yeah.
put it up. Could I speak to Chief Superintendent Gates? Melissa? I wondered if you had time to talk. The night Sweet Hope was destroyed. You're certain everyone was saved? You know they were. There were no strangers in the village that night, no soldiers, MOD men, anyone who might not have been so easily accounted for. Why are we going over all this again? Because I'm trying to find out the secret that destroyed our marriage. If I knew why you stopped loving me, why you started to doubt me, I've asked myself those questions a thousand times. This is to do with Steve Blake, isn't it? It's to do with us. It's to do with you. Just tell me what you're hiding. Melissa, but I'm afraid Mother's been confused for some time now. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Was it the accident at Sweet Hope that affected her? Well, it didn't help. But uh, she was mixed up before that. I finally admitted to myself that I couldn't cope. The nursing home she's in is terribly good. I expect she enjoys having visitors, doesn't she? Takes the strain off you. I really don't think it's a good idea. Mary, you know I had a lot of problems after Sweet Hope. Milk? Uh, thank you. No sugar. I did hear you've been troubled. And I remember your mother from when I first moved to the village. She was very kind to me. I would love to say yes, Melissa, but I have to think of Mother first. I'm sure you understand that, don't you? Of course. She's the best MP we've ever had. She's a wonderful woman, isn't she? And success hasn't changed her. So you've known Mary for quite a while. Oh, yes, her mother was a neighbour of mine. I was looking forward to seeing her again. I'm sure she'd be delighted to see you. Do you think so? Do you know, I can never remember the most direct route to the nursing home. Do you think I should go back and ask Mary? Oh, no, no, no. She's got a very full afternoon. I should think it's the A140. Then once you're on the Cromer Road, look out for signs for Thornfield Hall. A140. Excellent. Thank you. Recruitment? Through the gates, follow the signs. And welcome to Zentex, friend. Thanks. Welcome to 
is Zentex. Welcome to the future. It isn't just the product that is revolutionary here at Zentex Software, but the whole manufacturing process. That is why we rigorously assess your suitability to become part of the Zentex family, even as day workers. We want you, but only if you want us. If you care to begin, you have precisely 60 minutes to complete the Zentex Entry Challenge. Is this wise? You worry too much. He's under control. And the risk? What risk? He's tagged. He's like a rat in a maze. No, he'll do his job very nicely. Hello, Mrs. Madigan. Is this your daughter? My daughter? Excuse me. I think this is yours. The initials. <laughs> I am with strangers. Well, you must have made friends with somebody here, Elizabeth. <laughs> Do you really not know anybody? Do you know the strangers I'm with? People who say they know me and, and look like people I used to know, but can you tell me, dear, who they really are? Elizabeth, are you saying your daughter isn't who she says she is? We've come here to be among strangers. No, Elizabeth. What you said before, can you tell me again? Can you do that? Can you explain? Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Who are you? I've spent hours like this. It won't get you anywhere. I think she's probably a little bit tired. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was insensitive of me. I... Congratulations. Your test results were excellent. I trust you have no other plans for today? Welcome to Zentex. This is just one of 20 dispatch units working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's a pretty big operation, then. The biggest. 50,000 units a day out from here alone. Still nowhere meeting the demands of the global market. You'll have heard of the Zentex Odyssey range. Of course. We're very proud of it. John. This is Steve Blake. Mr. Beck will be your section supervisor. John Beck, pleased to meet you. And welcome to Zentex. Mr. Beck will look after you. So, uh, what's my job? Oh, you've landed more than a job here. You've landed the chance of a lifetime. <laughs> Go and get your work suit. And welcome to the future. Get hold of you. 
You okay? I've traced the owner of the ring. Come on. Elizabeth Madigan has got Alzheimer's, right? But when I gave her the ring, it was very clear she wanted to tell me something. It was as if she knew what I'd been through. What about the daughter, Mary Madigan? Well, that's another success story. Before the Sweet Hope incident, she was a solicitor in family law. Now she's MP for Norfolk East. And her office uses Zentex software, right? How do you know that? Zentex is owned by Patrick Leonard, one of the Sweet Hope survivors. I guarantee you, Zentex is at the heart of whatever's going on. Well, what would they want with their own computer systems? What would anyone want? Control. Well, they've already got a pretty effective way of getting control. The man who used to be my husband is testimony to that. Well, whatever's going on, it goes beyond mere personality changes. Personality changes? Is that what you're calling it now? No, I'm just taking it slowly. Look, I know this sounds crazy. Oh, not the alien theory again. Look, there may be no bombs, no guns, no hurry, but it's still an invasion. How else do you explain it? I can't. I know, I know some weird stuff is going on. I know the world seems to have slipped out of focus. You know, that doesn't mean there isn't a reasonable explanation. No, that isn't reason, it's denial. And it's because you're so scared of the truth and what it might actually mean that you're trying so hard to avoid it. Steve? Yeah, yeah. Must be lack of sleep. Come on. There she is. What's the penalty for breaking into a nursing home? You have to stay there. <laughs> A friend of mine, Steve. Hello. We thought we'd come back for another chat. When I came to see you the other day, you said you were with strangers. Do you remember? The last time I visited, the wedding ring. That's right. You brought the other ring. How do you mean, the other ring? I am two, not one. Now we, we both have a ring. But you must not tell that woman. Which woman is that? The one dressed in my daughter's skin, of course. Elizabeth, do you know why you're here? Because we are many, but we are one. We must breathe our own air and not share yours. Who must? You go too slowly. We need to help you on your way. On our way? Where? To your destiny. Our destiny? Your end. Your, your full stop. Your destiny. I am two, not one. We got company. Of course, I wouldn't have allowed it. Mistaken. You're still deluded. Oh, 
Blame me. I've been tracing Sweet Hope survivors. I thought it would be good to meet your mother. Oh, good. To pummel a confused old lady with questions she can't answer. That's your idea of good, is it, Mr. Blake? That's the interesting thing. She didn't actually seem that confused. I shall be taking out an injunction against either of you setting foot in this place ever again. How did she know my name? It's Fiona, isn't it? It's Fiona Leonard. Have we met? You don't know me, but I saw your photograph in a newspaper the morning after your village disappeared into the sea. David, come on. Do you remember anything about that night? David! David! So how soon can we get our own divers down? Can't. The whole lot went up just after Steve took these. This is all the proof you've got? Well, it's a pretty big haul. Why didn't Steve bring them to me? I think after the last meeting he feels uncomfortable. He doesn't know you're here, does he? No. We need your help to get these photos placed. Melissa, if Steve wanted to place them, he could ring any editor in the country. No, I think he feels he's been away too long. This is Steve Blake you're talking about. I know. You really don't know him at all, do you? Come on. I think introductions are in order. Refreshment, please. Refreshment. Come on, friends. We'd like to share our tea break. I'll join you. I shouldn't go showing anybody you can write, man. Education's a new leprosy here. If you're so keen to work, Steve, drop these off at PDU for me. <sighs> PDU, what's that? Program Development Unit. That's Block C, just across the lot. What made him want to leave this behind? If he hasn't told you, I'm not going to. You don't like me very much, do you? I don't know you well enough to like or dislike you, but I do care about Steve. I expect he's capable of looking after himself. No, he isn't. Not yet. He doesn't know what he wants. Did you know he's been married? No, I didn't. But I don't see why that should concern me, do you? Well, I think you should know it was me he was married to. Yet. It's under control. Yes, 
only a search, please understand. It's not that we suspect you, it's that we don't want you taking advantage of Mr. Leonard's trust. Don't worry about, friend. Nothing at all. Open the jacket. Where did you get it? Pity you. Not bad for a first timer. Hopelessly off target, but pretty damned audacious, I have to say. Problem, Gary? No, no. Steve is taking quite a shine to the place. Uh, he wants to see what sort of roof Mr. Leonard puts over our heads. <laughs> Good lad, Steve. I had a feeling about you from the start. Okay to show him now? He'll be our guest. Don't mind, Dad. He'll be dead to the world till supper time. It's mainly because of his health care that we're here at all. He'll look after the workers' dependents as well. From the cradle to the grave. Pull up a pew. There you are. See what he was trying to nick? That's some sub branch of something they were working on last week. So what makes you want to steal the program? I'm working for one of Zentex's rivals. Bad answer. For two reasons. One, Centex don't have any rivals on account that they make the best operating software in the world. And two, any industrial spy knows once it's already on disk, it's old news. So why didn't you turn me in? Because I've been watching you. And I think you think this place is as unhealthy as I do. They're giving you a job, they're giving you security. Oh, sure. To Leonard save my skin. Saved his too. Put a roof over our heads. So what's in it for them? Well, why don't you ask them? I lose my five-year bonus on disciplinary grounds. No way. Didn't say I wanted to leave. I just want some of their power. In their programs, there's stuff buried that I've never even dreamed of. I want to know what's going on. What sort of stuff? How do you mean? What, like viruses? No, no, this is beyond viruses. This is more like... But I can't show you. If we could just get into that development suite, eh? I take it they haven't issued you with a key? Not exactly. Give me your banker's card. What? Banker's card. <sighs> Should do the trick. Security. It's just a push button obstacle race, isn't it? Don't get me wrong, the system here works very well. It's very neat and tidy. Everybody's on a basic wage, but if you make it to Grey Black within five years, you make it to a 300% bonus. So paradise is always just around the corner. Not even that close if you mess up. They can pull the rug from you the other day before, given sufficient reason. Are you still here? So many questions, John. I think you'll make the team in record time. By the way, Steve, you better keep your eye on the second hand. I can only time lapse the cameras on a six minute sequence. You do this every night? I'm still no further on. Oh, I can get inside the program, okay? But I can't crack the encoding. It's no fun working in six minute bursts. If you could break in, could you alter a program in development? I'm not interested in sabotage, Steve. I just want to know I'm a control freak. But if you were, could you? Since you ask, I could make software so faulty that the whole system would collapse. Banks, companies, government departments would all be under my command. The Zentex software could do the same thing. I'm sure, if they want it. Well, what makes you think they don't? Cartwright. That's an interesting idea, John. What makes you think that? I've seen him in a grade red fraternizing, sir. Fraternizing? Has it been getting in the way of their work? Not exactly, sir, no. I I really don't like doing this, sir. 
Last night, I saw them going into program development. That's off limits for reds and blues, as you know, sir. I see. And what's he call this casual that Cartwright has fallen in with? Blake, sir. Steve Blake. And do you think he's a threat? Not to the whole section, sir, no. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. But I'd rather not have him in mind. I've spent a long time trying to create harmony here. A balance between the company's requirements and yours. Security, guidance, opportunity. My five-year plan. Of course, sir. We're all very grateful. I may have to be cruel to be kind. Get rid of Cartwright, sir. You are the section leader. You have to be responsible for your own men. I've only got four months, sir, before... I'll be monitoring your section very closely. That'll be all, John. Mary Madigan said her mother had Alzheimer's before Sweet Hope, right? Right. Okay, so let's just say she has been the victim of some sort of, I don't know, psycho spiritual takeover. A lot of her memories have already gone. Her true self is only half there, so her mind wanders and she talks from both sides. Yeah. Why do they let her? I don't know. I suppose she's no threat. She's just some sort of confused old lady who nobody listened to until we came along. Maybe Joanna should hear about this. Yeah. <laughs> I think Joanna needs a bit more than an old lady before she'd go for it. Oh, she's already going for it. She's seen the photos. What? I went to see her. I took them. Great. So what inspired you to go behind my back? Oh, I see. You think I should have been more open. What, the way you've been with me? Why didn't you tell me she was your ex-wife? What does it matter? Well, it matters that I've told you everything and you keep your past from me. We're supposed to trust each other. Hello? Hi, Joanna. Yeah, it's me. Yeah, I just heard about the photographs. Oh, yes, your Sweet Hope specials. They were quite impressive. Well done. Well, I'm glad you like them. I do like them. You're back on form, but I'm afraid I won't be able you to... You won't be able to print them. Sorry. No, I'm glad for your help. You know I am. The Zentex stuff has been brilliant. Zentex stuff? What Zentex stuff? The stuff you sent me. Sorry? I sent you nothing about Zentex. What? Nothing at all. You sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Look, Steve, why don't you get a secretary? Well, maybe someone in your office. For goodness sake, Steve, I didn't send you any information about right. Zentex, OK? OK, yeah, I'll, I'll call you back. Joanna didn't send me the Zentex cuttings. She didn't know there was a Sweet Oak connection. So who did? OK. Grade Red Day shift. You're 12 hours too early, friend. Yeah, tell me about it. They just called me in to do nights. Gary? Steve! Lousy entrance, but great timing. You've got to stop this. It's too dangerous. I'm telling you, you don't know what you're getting into. I can't stop now, mate. I'm on a roll. The seagull has landed. Look, Gary, I can walk away from this, but you can't. You're the one in danger. You know who gave me the idea for suicide virus? You did. Somebody wanted me to come here. I've been set up. Think about it, right? All this time I've been working on how the program protects itself. It's antiviral devices. And all along I should have been looking at how it self-destructs. Gary, listen to me. Don't you see? The code. I think the code has a self-destruct capacity too. If it suspects it's being penetrated, it changes. I've got to sneak up on it. Watch. Watch. Hello? I... 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 I, 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 but, Mrs. Madigan, Elizabeth, is that you? But, 
You have to help. We're invisible because we're everywhere. Don't you see? You, you, you must warn people. You, you must warn me. Who wins? The army with just one weapon or the army with thousands of small ones? Elizabeth, can I come and see you again? Elizabeth, can you ask to see me? Now then, Mrs. Madigan, have you been trying to call Mary? You know we can arrange that. You only have to ask. Suicide ship. A chameleon code. These guys are nearly as brilliant as me. Maybe they've buried it into startup program. I think time's up, isn't it? Hmm? This is the way to repay me. John, you know me. What are you doing? I thought we were mates. So did I, Gary. And that's what really hurts. I'm sorry to have called you out at this hour, but you did say if those people tried to get in touch... You're sure they didn't come back? Yes, we've tightened up security. I really don't know how she got hold of the number. Elizabeth, Mary's here to see you. They know. I've told them everything. It's Mary, your daughter. I haven't got a daughter. We have no need of sons and daughters. I thought you knew that. Mother. Why do you keep telling them you're my daughter? I want to talk to the other two. They understood. Let me talk to the other two. Five years in your greasy little hands. John, I promise you no more. I promise you, you've got to believe me. I want more than promises. I want to see you so clean, you squeak. Anything, anything, please stop. Stop, stop. Aye! Say that! going to move. We're going to be able to breathe again. Why do you say these things? Why do you pretend you don't know? When you've still got the taste of salt in your mouth. I don't know what you mean? You can't taste the salt. I can. You and me and the rest of Sweet Hope buried at sea. They've only got to look long enough to find us. They've been to see me. They know who we are. Now, you have to rest. Come on, Mother. Drink up. That's it. Good. Good girl. That's it. Very good. And some more. Just a little more. Come on. Good girl.
becoming a regular bad luck charm, aren't you, Steve? He was killed. You can't paint over this one. I got a feeling about this. Call it a copper's instinct, but I think this could be a suicide. Well, cards right. He wasn't the most balanced of men. Even you must have noticed that. He was murdered. Who by? All those men over there have alibis. You're the only one who admits to being up on the roof of them at the time. That's how it looks, Steve. You can't tell me what I saw. You won't get inside my head. Steve, if you were up on the roof of them, then it could be murder. If you weren't, then it's suicide. Now I'm going to ask you one more time. Were you up on the roof of them? talk to her. She's asked to see me. This isn't a prison, is it? Look, I'm afraid you're going to have to leave or I'll call security. I need to see her. She's been trying to tell me something very important. Hello, Jack. Yes, could you come over? I've got a problem on the front desk. Where's Matron? Fetch an ambulance. Mrs. Madigan's having some sort of an attack. Hurry up, girl. I don't know what happened. She seems to be sort of hemorrhaging. Tony's with her. He's looking at her. What time is the inspector? Look, excuse me, you can't... Hello. Danny, I can touch you, dear. The words come out of your mouth, but they never make any sense. This was a bit blatant for you, wasn't it? A bit clumsy. Maybe you're getting desperate. Come on, Elizabeth. Come on. How long have you been trying? Two minutes. Leave her. No. Elizabeth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who are you? What are you? I think it's fair to say that I am not Patrick Leonard. What do you want? What do you want? Why don't you let them kill me? Because you're no threat. Simple as that. If I was no threat, you'd ignore me, but now I know more than ever. And if you knew how little that was, you wouldn't be standing there bragging about it. You saved me. Why did you save me? No worry. You'll find out soon enough. Nothing to see, mate, on your way. I thought I'd recognise a car. We've already got an ID for the owner. The owner's registered as Melissa Gates, isn't she? 